welcome to Ellen Ruth Soap. I'm Ellen, and today we're gonna to be making a soap using this fragrance. It's called Pomegranate Mango, and this is from Be Scented. Uh, and I have my bullet notes on here. I looked up their reviews, and it says it discolors to tan. There's a little bit of aniline in there, and none means it doesn't cause acceleration or separation or rising. That's what the reviews said. So here it is. We're gonna use that for the fragrance. <laughs> So for the colors, I'm going to be using My Red Obsession from Nurture Soap, and this is so pretty. It does have a little bit of a, not pink, like a fuchsia tint to the red. It's not a true red, it's gorgeous. So that'll be one of the colors, and then the other color will be from Wholesale Supplies plus Sunday Fun Day Yellow. So those two together, just look really happy and fruity to me. Um, still in the middle of winter here as so I'm filming this, but just fruit, and bright colors sound good to me right now. <laughs> kind of hoping for spring and summer, but I love winter. I'm happy where I'm at, but. So fruity soap sounds good, let's make it. And to make this even more fruity than those colors and the fragrance, we're gonna add some real fruit puree. And the way I do it, you can actually get fruit and blend it up and make your own. I kind of cheat and I buy baby food because these have very clean ingredients. It literally just has the fruit and a touch of citric acid in there to stop it from browning. The citric acid in soap is great. It's a chelator and it helps with soap scum. And I'll be doing a future video on how to add citric acid to your soaps for a nice rinse even with hard water. But that's a whole other subject. Let's get back to the fruit. This is fruit puree. It's mango. Kind of orangey and um, this is wonderful in soap. I love fruit purees in my soaps. They are a lather booster because of the natural sugars and they just feel good. And you know, there's some vitamins and such in your uh, fruit and so why not? I think it sounds, it's got a great label appeal and I think it makes for a beautiful feel to the lather, super bubbly lather with a fruit soap. So that's going in there. And because this does have a touch of vanillin, I will probably use my trusty titanium dioxide bottle. It's getting kind of low. Um, I'm gonna have to make some more. What's in this bottle is, can you hear that? A couple of stainless steel ball bearing beads are in the bottom to help mix it. And I fill this up at a rate of one part titanium dioxide to two parts distilled water. One of the tricks to a nice blend is having those beads in there, but if you warm the water up, warm water tends to disperse the TD better so you don't get those specks. I still occasionally will get titanium dioxide flex. It just, it's tough to blend this stuff, but that is a tip that helps. So I pre-blend it, and if I'm not gonna use this, if this lasts me you know, more than a couple of soap batches, I will add a touch of preservative in here because it has water. Anytime you have water in something and it's gonna sit, you need to preserve it. Um, so that's how I pre-make this so I can just grab it when I wanna use it. I grab the bottle, I shake, 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 and it's ready to go. Also, if you don't wanna use a preservative and mess with it, you can just blend it up one little batch at a time. That works fine too. Uh, this is water soluble TD and you wanna be sure when you get your titanium dioxide that you know which it is, if it's oil soluble or water soluble and then mix it with the proper thing. <laughs> so it's just something to look out for when you're buying titanium dioxide. So all that being said, I'm gonna get everything prepped and ready to go and let's come back and make some pomegranate mango soap. Okay, we are back with our oils and butters all melted and ready to go for our additives. So I'm gonna add my dry additives in here and my baby food. I like to add it into the oils. Um, it just blends in, that way I know it's blended completely thoroughly. I don't have to worry about a speeding trace or anything. I have my fragrance off to the side. I will add that last because this does have sugars and anytime you're adding an additive like this, it can speed things along. Even though this fragrance got good reviews that it didn't accelerate, you wanna proceed cautiously. So let's get the baby food in here first. This is four ounces of baby food. I'm gonna use the whole jar in here and I water discounted from my lye solution to make room. This would be considered a liquid even though you don't mix your lye with it. So this is a liquid portion. Anytime you have a puree, whether it's avocado, banana, fruits, uh, aloe vera gel, all that stuff that you add to the oils, you, if it's liquidy, you need to discount it from your liquid portion. So gonna get the whole jar in here and I'm hoping with the titanium dioxide it won't discolor too much and since I'm talking about the fruit puree I'll just tell you right now I did not add any cane sugar to my lye solution because this little mango baby food here has plenty of sugar I did not need to increase that and up my risk of um, overheating my soap <laughs> 
So any additives like fruits that have natural sugars, uh, they are great lather boosters. You don't need the extra sugar in the lye solution with those. If you get too much sugar, like honey, um, you have to keep an eye on your soap and make sure it doesn't overheat. Uh, if you like to gel like I do, I love gel phase. If you pop it in the refrigerator and you don't like gel phase, you probably don't have to worry too much about it because it's going in the fridge anyway. But I will just check on this a couple of times throughout the day as it's going through gel phase and make sure it's not starting to like rise in the middle. You can kind of see the soap will start to rise a little and then if you see any cracks, it's time to go in the refrigerator because it's starting to overheat at that point and you can stop it if you catch it in time. I don't think we'll have a problem. My basement studio here is pretty cool. So let me get this all blended up and we will come back and get ready to make some soap. with the lye solution here that does not have sugar, but it does have uh, Tussa silk fibers and sodium lactate. And I wanted to show you my piping tip. This is an Atico 888. It's just a big swirly tip. And I wanna do just sort of like a frosting fluffy top on these. I'm not gonna do flowers with it, um, but I just want it to look really like decadent and fruity and fluffy. So I'm hoping to do something on top. So I set this off to the side and I will save off some of the colors to go in a piping bag. All right, and uh, I'm gonna be doing a hanger swirl, hopefully, if everything's behaving itself. I just think those colors look lovely, and I think a swirl in the body with some twirly piping on top is just gonna represent and be really fun looking. That is the hope. So again, I have the fragrance off to the side. I will add it to the colors after they're blended, and so let's get moving forward.
Okay, as I'm filming this, it totally looks like a hot dog with mustard, right? <laughs> uh, it's a little loose. I'm just gonna let it continue to firm up until I can wrap it up and get it in the piping bag. the next day and I'm excited to get in here. Look at those pretty colors and we're gonna ignore. <laughs> I ran out of frosting and it just went from bad to worse. So my family's gonna get a couple of bars of soap because they got little wonky tops. But anyway, all that being said, isn't that fun? I'm so excited to get in here. Smells really pretty and so, and I obviously, I didn't have any trouble with overheating last night. In fact, I had it sitting on top of another soap I made and together I had no overheating issues. So uh, let's get in here and see what we got going on. to get cutting this soap. Look at those pretty colors. And it isn't that beautiful that my red obsession from Nurture Soap. It I you know, I didn't know how to describe it. It's not a true red like trial by fire, but it's um it's just got a little pinky hue in the background. I love it. To me, it's a very fruity color. I just think it is perfect for this. Oh yeah. <laughs> Ooh, there's my little sample slice. Oh man, we're gonna get some soapy patterns. So yeah, I misjudged the amount of frosting or I went really heavy on the first loaf and consequently <laughs> ran out of frosting for that last little bit, which is fine because these are so delightful. I was, you know, I would be tempted to take one anyway. So that worked out perfectly for me. Family gets some of this soap. And I was just so happy that it didn't overheat with the fruits in there. And I think part of that is I did not add the cane sugar. So it was only the fruit being uh, the sugar in there. Oh my gosh, I'm just crazy about these swirls. Super duper happy. To me, this represents, right? Pomegranate and mango. Doesn't it just look tropical and fruity? And this fragrance is really nice. It is not, it doesn't have that cloying sweetness. It just has a really clean, sweet fruity scent to it. It doesn't smell like, um, you know, sugared cereal. Sometimes you can get that where, and some people like that, like Fruit Loops scent, which is cool if that's what you're going for. But if you're going for an actual fruit scent, you don't want that kind of candy scent. This does not have a candy scent to it, which I really appreciate. Oh my goodness. So fun. All right, next loaf. And it was fun to do a different top like that. You know, I do the rosettes a lot when I pipe and leaves, and uh, which I love doing, but you know, I'm trying to keep things fresh and not always do the same thing. <laughs> I don't want to be such a creature of habit, which I tend to be anyway. That's my nature. I am a habit person. Oh, wow. That's pretty. All right, let's do a preview of soapy patterns because I know we're going to have some good ones here. this way oh so fun and let's do that way oh cool 
It's like an angry butterfly. <laughs> I don't know. What does that look like to you? Fun. I'll do a soapy patterns at the end for sure. So I was trying to think of what sort of additive I haven't used yet. I've definitely done uh, fruit additives. Um, I've done avocado. I've done aloe vera gel and aloe vera juice, like this is the juice. Um, I was trying to think if there was some additives I have not done yet. I've done beer. If you can think of an additive that you would like to see me do in a soap, let me know down below. I would love to hear. Uh, sometimes I just sort of run out of ideas. So if you have any inspiration for me, I'd love to hear it. Something new and different would be awesome. All right, let's keep cutting. Okay, into the last loaf and there's the, I did my little toothpick to try and make little waves. It looks like a mess now, but I bet when the bars are cut, it's gonna look cute. But yeah, you can see how I widened them. Yep, running out of soap frosting. I am not a good eyeball judger of things. You know, some people can eyeball, like look at a room full of people and tell you about how many people are in the room or look at a measurement and tell you about how much it is. That is not me. I tell you what, <laughs> I am not good at eyeball guesstimating things. And, you know, there it is. That's why. <laughs> so, it's okay. Oh, this was a fun one to make. Well, I really appreciate you taking the time to watch the video today. I hope you enjoyed it. And if you did, please don't forget to hit that subscribe button so you don't miss anything going on in the soap studio. Thanks for joining me. And I hope that you have a really wonderful day. Mm -hmm.